So quickly and with kindness, I want to go through this real quick because sometimes it's really hard to hear when people come against the people we really like. And J.D. Farag is a very nice guy. You can see that he is a, he means well and he is, he just seems like a nice guy. But the problem is he's a false teacher. He's a false prophet. In fact, he has been prophesying things that the rapture for a very long time. And so we have to separate uh, the the people we like versus the people you understand for your teaching. And there should be no people that you understand for your teaching because if you're well educated in the Bible, uh, all, all of them, all the books, all the way to the end, you would understand that the laws of God are for today, tomorrow, and for all things. And so we are at the end times and people are listening to J.D. Farag because he has a lot of good information. He is going against the narrative and he has to take his pro, uh, program offline um, for half of it. So he, he on his website is the rest of it because he has been censored before because he does have his eyes half open. And this is the dangers to this is if you have somebody you are truly putting everything you have in JD believes the rapture is the end game. It's on its way. It's right here. And whether it is or whether it's not, he's missing the entire point and he's leading a tremendous amount of people astray. So let's listen to this and then I will break it down. In Isaiah 30, it's going to be germane to what we're going to look at and talk about today. Now go write it before them on a tablet and note it on a scroll that it may be for time to come forever and ever okay that's what you're going to write yeah verse 9 that this is a rebellious people lying children children who will not hear the law of the Lord who say to the seers do not see and to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things. Speak to us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Get out of the way. Turn aside from the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. What? <laughs> now, this is where you absolutely have to understand you cannot be deceived with the false teachers and false preachers of this world. He is going to avoid every part of this. This part was completely about what? If you just heard it, right? It's about the law, right? The laws of God. Now, the Christian church believes the laws of God are no more, that you don't have to do them, that they've nailed to a cross, and that they are a special people outside of what the Bible says, that they are able to sin and they can get away with it because they don't have the law. They don't have to keep the law. They are saved by grace. It's all about grace to the Christian church, and that is not correct. I'm sorry about the cows in the background, the dogs in the background, the noise in the background. I have to do these videos, and so there's a lot of interruptions, so you just have to bear with me. And let's listen in on what he says. Do you know what they were saying? They were saying, first, to the seers, stop. We don't want to see it. And they were saying to the prophets, stop. We don't want to hear it. We only want to hear smooth things. We don't want to hear hard things. And if you are going to speak, just lie to us. Prophesy deceits. We don't want to hear the truth. We want to hear what we want to hear. And if you can't do that, then don't bother. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease. Just don't say anything at all. Okay, so that is my point right here. This man, this false teacher, the false prophet... He just prophesied, he just basically never even mentioned the law right here, right? That should be on the emphasis of everything. When you read and you understand and you study the law, you know that you should have it up on your heart, mind, and soul at all times. Like we should get up in the morning and we should hit the play button on the laws of God and we should be listening to them as we get up, as we walk around our house. They should be on the doorsteps of our, of our house and on the gates and on the door frames and 
everywhere that, that that is the point of the law is this law is supposed to be embedded into our hearts minds and souls that we are violated ourselves when we sin against God because we know it's in his laws that he doesn't want us to do this and he is a good God he is a righteous God he is a a a, a God that delivers blessings not curses when you keep the law but for those that don't keep the law you fall under curses things in your life just don't make sense things don't happen right you may get a paycheck it just blows away those are the curses that our father watches out for those who love him and if your heart is aligned and it is dialed into our creator if it is where you need to be he will bless you he will bless you jd farag is a false teacher and a false prophet i still watch him for the information in there but what he says about rapture is incorrect what he says about bible prophecy is incorrect what he says about the laws of god are incorrect if your preacher is not telling you that the most important thing in this entire world are the laws of god then he is on the wrong path and people will go well you forgot about the messiah you didn't say anything about the messiah look if we wouldn't have violated the laws of god our messiah wouldn't have been slaughtered we wouldn't have had him just slaughtered on the on the on the tree, beaten, destroyed, decimated, right? He had the he had the courage of a lion. He is the lion. He is the the lion of Judah, and you know what? He will come back and he will save people, but it's not going to be until the very very end. That is our king. That is our our commander. Is Yahushua Hamashiach? That's why there's only one name under heaven by which you may be saved, and that's Yahushua Hamashiach. Jesus the Christ is what everyone calls him. There's no J's in, in Hebrew. His name could never have been Jesus. So let's call upon the right name. Let's call upon the name of Yahushua. Let's call upon the correct name of God. Yahua. Yadhead Vadhead. Right? It is the it is our creator's name. I am that I am. Guys, time is very short. And salvation is but mentioning in prayer and acknowledging the Son of the Most High. Yahushua. That is what Bible says is for salvation. But if you want sal if you want to know for sure, and you're not you 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 really care what your creator says, then you're going to read the laws of God. Because inside the laws of God is what we should be doing, living, how we should be breathing, treating our neighbors, weighing our, our goods, everything that's there. There's 613 laws that apply. Lots, a lot of them don't apply to us, right? Like if you're if you're not a, a male, then a lot of them don't apply to you. If you're not a female, some of them don't apply to you. If you're not a priest, I mean, it's it goes in the circles that it is. It is laws for the, the land and the community and where you are at at the present time. And you can apply it to your life and you can take blessings home from doing that. Because in those blessings, our creator lives. When you look around us, when you look in this world, when you look at the uh, beauty of creation, the, the, the amazing, when you, when you taste food and your taste buds send the senses to your brain and you can feel and you touch and you can feel the wind upon your face. When you see fire light, how does fire work? How is everything around us perfect? It had to be coded. It had to be designed. It had to be created. None of this is just random happenstance. You don't just take a pile of bricks and blow them up 500 times and some point a building happens. It never happens like that. There is a creator. And this creator has sustained a book. And this book is the Bible. And I do not believe the king is the, the, the final word. There's 66 books. They, they got a hold of this stuff. You're missing Jasher, Jubilees, Enoch. Uh, I, I would even toss the books of Adam and Eve in there. Because when you put, when you toss all of the extra books in there that are left out, you can understand the exact power of Satan. And Satan is crafty, and Satan hates you, and he wants your soul, he wants your kids' souls, he wants everything about you. And this is the time. This is the time we must repent. This is the time we must look to our Creator. And he, we've been told how to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That is the start, right? And then you take it from there. 